All right, now I can share the screen again. Here we are. Oh, share it. All right. All right, we're back. Uh, Nancy, to get to your question, so we have a bid at 355, but the um, when interest rates go up and underwriting firms don't have deals to do, typically they either get out of the business or they downsize the group or they split off and they merge with something else. And we've seen that over the years. So I thought we would have potentially fewer underwriting firms participating. Um, and in, in, even in early 22, there were some groups that did, you know, articles in the bomb buyer that we were talking about, firms that were firing people and everything else. And yet, it hasn't really happened. There's a huge demand for muni bonds. So even though there's less out there, there's a lot of firms participating in it. So we haven't had, you know, deals where we're doing five and six bids. We're getting, you know, 10 bids, like, on average. So um, there we go. So it's good. It's very, it's a very positive thing. We'll probably see also as a, just an illustration of the stability, these bids come in. You know, I, we're not going to see a 350, then a 375, then a four. All these bids are going to probably be like within, you know, 10 basis points of each other, plus or minus. So again, like indi indicative of stability. Um, there's a huge demand for muni bonds, and there's not a ton of supply. So it, 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 the end result is actually stronger bids than should be the case relative to um, taxable rates. So municipal rates are tax exempt. Taxable rates are taxable. Usually there's a relationship between those two. Usually tax exempts can range from 70 to 85% of taxable. So if the tax is four, tax exempt should be like on a yield between three and 350. Here we're at like 60%. Like munis are way stronger than treasuries right now. So why is, that, why is that? It's because of the demand. It's just there's so much demand. And it demands coming from safe harbor. They're looking for the it's safe. safe. It's safe. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if nothing else changes, you say, well, maybe rates will go down. Well, Treasury rates probably will go down at some point sure. you know, moving forward. Um, but if everything else stays equal, like, I don't see munis going down too much because they're already too so strong relative to Treasuries. So, um, it, you know, it's again, these are a lot of good things happening for the market. Uh, at least from the issuance perspective side. So, so right now, just to look at the screen, we still have we have one bid from KeyBank. As these bids come in, as you know, they just pop in automatically. Um, it'll show how so many. That's the bids. ceiling, basically. That's the ceiling. So this is a yeah, the the worst bid we can get is the 355. So we said you know sub 350. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get there. Now, if everyone recalls, they see where they rank, so they get feedback. And they know where they rank. So let's say, you know, on one hand, KeyBank might have, might be like, well, we can go to 349. We're going to come in a little heavy, and banks do that. I mean, it's natural if they have time. Um, they might have other stuff going on. They might not want to want to play fiddle around. But um, you know, if no one else comes in, they went in at 355. They probably, you know, did pretty well. But my my guess is that there's going to be numerous bids that are going to beat that, and they'll then probably incrementally improve their bid. Uh, but they don't see the bids. They only see what position yeah, they're in. Yeah, they, they, the they just see the rank. They just see the rank. Like it says, so right now it says key bank. It says, oh, you ranked first. You're in first place. That, oh, that's, that's all. That's all. Where they're ranked. Yep. So that, that, that gives them some sort of. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Maybe. Exactly. Because the last time I was like, wow, they just flying blind. Yeah, but like, they well, don't know that they're the know, only they bid are. or the first bid. Say that again, Nancy? They don't know if they're the first or only. They just so they've no exactly. Context. They know that yeah, you, they just know their rank. You're right. Yeah, they, they they can't see all the stuff on our screen or anything like that. But uh, you know, there's another the, the other alternative talking about flying blind is when you just put your bid in, you get no feedback. So that we that's what we do for a lot of sales too. It's more like a sealed bid situation where just you know sharpen the pencil, right, put one, it in one bid. We've been using this in Fairfield for a long time and in a couple other towns, and it just seems to work and everybody likes it and it leads to really great results. So we typically, uh, we've, we've kept with it, but uh, it definitely proves for some excitement. As everybody may remember, once we enter the final two minutes of the bid, so once we get to 11.13 on the screen, if anyone overtakes the first place bid, 
it'll automatically extend two minutes from that point. So it could go on for eternity. It typically doesn't. We close the reveals and then everything works out. But like that one time was hilarious, yeah. if you recall. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You were in the room, you were in the room. No, it was, it was a few years ago. Yeah. It's pre Brenda. And it was just it was just hilarious. Uh, yeah, it went yeah. like it went into the notes. Yeah, it was yeah, there was a ton and it kept getting extended, extended, yeah. extended. And considering where the one person logged in uh, remotely was from, it was hilarious. Um it's like the last thing you probably wanted to be doing. So anywho, um, that's the deal. We we might see a lot of action. If we don't see that action, it doesn't mean that it was a failed bid or that anything was wrong. It means that whoever came in with that bid just threw the hammer down and was like, I'm not, you know, gonna worry about chipping away at it. And and we can definitely see that uh, scenario too. Again, we have six minutes to go roughly. Most bids kind of are gonna come in in the last, you know, three or four minutes, right up until the buyer. Some can even come in after the extension period. So it all depends on on what everyone's got going on in their day and how much they wanna uh, dedicate to this. There's a page in this uh, little handout there. So these are all the sales nationwide, page four, and it goes into page five. Five is a note, four is a bond. You know, it's an active calendar, but it's not three pages long. You know, there's a bunch of New Jersey, Texas, Minnesota. We're the only Connecticut sale today. It has a hundred million for a Florida deal, and you know, 50 for a New York, Monroe, Monroe County, but nothing too big. So we're going to get a lot of attention. Obviously, it's AAA, AAA. So full, full participation. Uh, we have five minutes until this end. But again, if it gets extended, you know, it could go uh, another four or five minutes. It's kind of more like the average. So it doesn't go, you know, 50 bids deep. So. And even when we use the other platform where everyone just puts their best bid in, say you have 10 bids, six of them come in within the last 40 seconds. Yeah. They always yeah, wait. I remember last year. Yeah, they wait until the last second. You know, because again, they're trying to digest all the info and they're trying to, you know, if, if there's data coming out, if the feds, you know, someone's talking at 11, 10 or whatever, or they're working their sales team to say, oh, listen, you know, can we tighten up this maturity? Can we tighten up? And they just want to wait until the last second so that they can get all that together. Click the button, it comes in automatically. And it's all integrated with their software too. So it's not like they have to, you know, recreate or, you know, if they had to call and go, run us down 20 different coupon rates and then the premium, and then we calculate it and it doesn't tie out because they said 4% and they meant 4.5 and they weren't paying attention. You know, that those were the old days, you know, 20 years ago ish. So it is, is it unusual that we're not having any other right now? No. I mean, it'd be nice if we had 10 on the screen already, but no. that would be no set suspense to that. Right. I mean, <laughs> Gotta, if you if you scroll down, or it just might be the Fairfield Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a little slow right now. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say if you scroll down, you can see that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, what are they all doing? <laughs> just hanging out. Yeah. Just hanging out. Yeah. Hovering over the button. Everybody's. Yeah, they basically are. You're probably right. I assume. The Fed chair testimony does that. Is that going to play in here at all? I mean, anything that they say ever. I mean, it could be any of the Fed presidents. It could be anything that gets put out there. If it, if it impacts what they think the direction of interest rates are going to be or what inflation is going to be or how many more rate hikes or any of that stuff, it might not mean too much fundamentally, like right this second, but you know, the market reacts and that could knock things around in, the, in any given direction. You know, the fact that the Fed paused last week was good. Yeah. But then the fact that they kind of took a little bit more hawkish stance with the, you know, later out here. Years. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, that said, if we look at munis from just before the Fed met and, and since, I mean, a couple basis points off, it's basically the same market. So, didn't really have much of an impact. All right. Oh, look at this here. See, now this might be a hammer. That could be a hammer drop because that's a great. really strong bid. Yeah. He should be like around a radio show. <laughs> I, I, I do do some commentating for sporting events with my kids from time to time when they yeah. turn COVID. So I had to. Uh, 
some color commentary. Extended one. <laughs> All, right, got one extension. All right, we got one extension. All right, we're going five seconds after the, the clock here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now we got the action. Now we got some. Feel like they're trained and winning. Right. <laughs> yeah, that all right. So there you go. And then can you can see, Nancy. Can you see these? Can she see them? Uh, yes, I can. Nancy. Yeah, I see it. I'm watching with less, now, lower than admittedly, less. enthusiasm. Just, are less. Uh -huh. are a little more enthusiastic than two minutes ago. <laughs> I know you're right. All right, so we're extended to the three, three, one, two. So this is where we keep track of the extensions. Yes, we're at 331. 3.4472. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, and that was on. Well, that was a 10 year deal of totally Apple. All right. Good. Don't start throwing that shit around. Come on. Bank qualified and 10 years. So, really, an orange. We're at a, we're at an Apple. Yeah. And you can just see, I mean, it's nice on this screen, you know, total interest. Right. You know, which accounts for the premium and it's not a present value factor right now, but. 9.1 versus these under over here, and you can kind of see how it. Yeah, it's a balance of that. But uh, the, the, these pre look like I mean, look at these two bids. Yeah. The premiums are almost identical. Yeah, look at that. The, yeah. Look at the total interest is only a seven hundred dollar difference. What that basically means is if they gave you seven hundred and one, um, you know, roughly more, they would launch ahead of J P Morgan. They would. Yeah. They but don't, they don't know. They that. don't know that. So. Thirty seconds. Okay. All they know is Morgan's ahead of them, right? All they know is someone's ahead of them. They don't even know who it is. So, so we're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, so you're on number two, or if you're on number three. Yep, exactly. See, Fidelity just put the one bit in. They probably sharpen their pencils as much as possible. We got 10 seconds to go. Oh, Jandy's trying. Yeah. Jandy is trying. I mean, they have a full base point to go. I don't think they're going to get there. That's no, I think. That's it. I think we're done. That's great. That's a great bet. Yeah. yeah. Number 31 is very good. And again, we talked about it's not bank qualified. The rates are up a couple basis points from the last sale. So that's that's great. 10 solid bids for a, a total of 19, which isn't by any stretch like the highest amount of bids we've ever seen people adjust. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you got 10 is probably among the highest that we've gotten. Yeah. That's really good. You know, it's 25 million, it's AAA, it's Fairfield. You, you're, you're, you're not too big that firms can't bid, but you're big enough that you're going to get the JP Morgans and Fidelis of the world that maybe don't look at a $2 million deal. Um, so that's excellent. So UBS took four cracks at it and were four basis points off. Yep. That's. Yep, yep. And it, well, Janney took three and they were. But they only they only improved one basis point on all, so they were really you know and so this possibility like Danny put in their best bid and they're like oh we're we're in second like if we could just you know maybe they're willing to take a little bit less money themselves because really all you have to do if you're an underwriter you're gonna say I want to make and, and I'll use kind of outrageous numbers let's say I want to make ten dollars a bond normally they make five or six four whatever a bond is a thousand dollars you have twenty five thousand bonds if you want to make ten dollars that says they're going to make two hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars, which is really not all that unusual. It's more indicative of a more volatile kind of market, so you don't really see that here. But let's just say it was ten dollars that Jenny had built in. They don't necessarily have to go and try to sell that bond at a lower yield or or find another buyer or whatever. They can just say, well, instead of two fifty, we'll take two forty. So it's just that little adjustment which just adds premium because it's going out of their pocket and into the premium to go to you. That brings the interest rate down incrementally each time. The fact that they put in three bids and they knew they were still ranked second. I mean, they just got to a point where they're like, okay, we got to let it go. Like, they're not going to, like, lose money or only make $2 a bond. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, it does come to a point. Do they have to wait in between? Yeah, yeah. Do they have to wait a certain amount of time in between each uh, Probably just for the screen to refresh. No, there's, there's no other requirement. No. Yeah, it's it's pretty much right away. So, I mean, we could be like this, but it looks like so Riley's verifying Fidelity's bid at a three thirty one two four four six. Once we have that verification, we'll make it official, and Jess could do whatever she needs to do from the uh, legal perspective, um, and then we'll email Fidelity and call them and do all that stuff. But 
this is a formality, but we always want to make sure that they didn't screw something up along the way. You, you, you didn't get the reofferings yet, right? No, no. You yet. can't get that yet. Okay, gotcha. Which we don't really need for some. Not even sure many of them should send I think they do like it afterward. So, nice job. Did anyone else? Can look at the best bid. Yeah, so, yeah, this is interesting to look at. I mean, you're going to basically every bid on the board, I can almost guarantee is going to be fives in the front, fours in the back. Once you get to the calls, fours, there might be a three here or there, a 350 here or there. But remember that these coupons only are associated with, you know, that. It's not like, oh, fives in the front is bad or anything like that. But the retail investor, you know, these guys all want fives. That's the standard. Right. Then it drops to the fours. And then what I say, you know, you find one maturity at a three something. So, you know, once that's all accumulated, they they're selling them for twenty seven five, and we're gonna go ahead and tie it out. We're tied out. So total is just nine point one eight. We're just dun, dun, dun. bond years, just equal principal. That's what it calculates to, and that's it. But I can go back out real quickly. Or do we have the number of the people on here? Um, just click around and find who, who put yeah. the bid in, and then no, I'll call them quick. Even though this basically, once mini auction, this particular site does it, they basically are like, okay, it's done, that's it. But we always like to talk to them, let them know it's official, nothing's changing, no amounts or dates are changing. And then all, we have to give them you know, all the information as far as distribution list, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if I go on to Fidelity, if we just looked at, now you have to go out to the other screen to get there. But I want to just, you know, you saw that coupon. I don't know, we could pick the second place bid, which was Janney. And five's in the front, four's in the back, boom, boom. But they didn't have that 3% coupon, which doesn't necessarily mean, well, then obviously the other bid's better because it's all about that premium. Uh, you know, how much are they giving you? How much are they trying to take for themselves? But all that stuff. But the market is pretty predictable in terms of couponing right now. When we were, COVID, if we were to go back to like the July 2020, even the July 21 sale, you would see, I mean, you'd see threes and fours here. You might see some twos out here because interest rates were like 0 0.15. They got to 2% like here, you know, in a, in a yield perspective. So, whereas now the 20 year yield on a muni, on this muni is probably about 4%. What is it? Did it get to? Did it actually get to four? Oh, no, only three seventy-five. That's not bad. So the first yield was a uh, two ninety-two. Where do you get? What screen is that? I'm gonna... They just emailed. Oh, they it emailed it to you. Okay, I can't get it on the screen. But um, what what it basically looks like is on this page twelve, and I could just I'll just point to it. But like this blue yield curve looks pretty normal, right? Well, that was five years ago. This one, the green one, is a year ago, still pretty normal. And then we entered this weirdo time of crazy inflation and Fed and all that kind of stuff. Two months ago was the purple one, and then red's current. The the yellow one's a, a month ago. So the red's a current. So it looks like a giant like tablespoon or something. So we got inversion in the front, and then it's fairly normal after that. But similar to what they're going to reoffer your bonds at i think the first maturity was like a 292 then it goes to 280 260 250 250 240 and then it starts coming back up and hits the 290 again in the year 36. you know so it actually i mean if this is what your bonds are priced off of so we had this really unique looking yield curve which you know so when we talk about like a glass and berry deal which was 10 years so it was all in here which is why you know, it, it's lower. But of course, if it was like this curve, it would even have been lower. It'd been two percent instead of two seventy four or whatever. So anyway, that's the big one, the bond. Everybody's happy, hopefully, right? Everybody. Yeah, it's good. Do we all agree? I mean, Jess is probably going to make some grand gesture to make it. A <laughs> um, are we ready? Yeah. Yeah, Brenda's going to make. You want me to go back to the other thing? Yeah. Oh, I just need to not the real message. All right, let me go back. There we go. So if I move this, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
So some people are just looking. Yeah, outside chance. Outside chance that one might be in a syndicate with another one. Oh. And then, um, or they could have just been looking at it. Yeah, just accept the bid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get the name. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to uh, make a motion to accept um, the oh. Fidelity Capital bid. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Which I always ask. Yeah. Oh. I'll call uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. I'm going to call well, thank you. Fidelity and let them know that we're good. You have her email and stuff, right? I'm going to come yeah. over to check now. <laughs> hey, Dan, it's Matt from Phoenix Advisors. How are you doing? Good, good. I just want to let you guys know you won. You've been awarded the the uh, Fairfield, Connecticut, twenty five six zero five. So it's all set to go. We're going to email Catherine and the syndicate email uh, with the results. No, no resize, and the distribution list will be attached and everything else. So thanks for the bid. Great job. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Bye bye. Perfect. Everybody's happy. Right. Dealing for one bid in. Boom. See, they just went in. Like some, like, I'm, I have other stuff to do. I got ten other bids I got to put together. I just yeah. my best bid. And some do that, and some. Well, that's like, talent too, to a certain extent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Because now what, there are times where you see. I mean, they knew that they had a decent bid. And... Yeah. Or they're just like, this is where we're willing to go. This is what the best we can do. Yeah. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, yeah, it was an educated. Oh, no, absolutely. Because well, the mark again, you got to look at the spoon. We talked about the spoon. So you look at the spoon. And you kind of know what the bond should price off of. How your guys can sell them. Sometimes they come in and like Fidelity might have had a 321, and then they say, oh, they won. But it's like you left 10 basis points on the table. 10 basis points on 25 million is like not going to make someone happy. You know, I mean, it happens. City did that recently. They just throw a bid in and they win. They don't care. Others are like, oh my God, like yeah, it just lost uh, money. They have, they might, they have it pre-sold. Uh, they probably right. have like, ten million of it pre-sold. Yeah, I'm saying they have a, a good portion of it, so it's not like. So they got a good number on that. That's why they feel comfortable. Yeah, exactly. They know, they know. But, but again, if you're trying to be, you know, like maximize every nickel, but then if you get too close, then you lose the bid altogether right. and you don't get anything. Now, does that rate tie directly to the the interest rate that we assume? In the budget for uh like this. absolutely no because the budget the waterfall whatever we want to call it for debt forecasting thing um is tied to that's tied to the true interest cost that's our expectation for true interest cost so those two are they're tied in theory mm -hmm. but in reality you're paying fives and fours so you're probably paying like a 425 yeah. on average so that was, you're going to say, oh, that number's higher. So that's what that premium is for, which so you got a premium of a million eight. You know, you take some of that, put it to that, offset it. Um, because as you see, like all the bonds sell at premiums and uh, and that's how that works. So it will be slightly higher, but that assumption we used on that particular model I'm talking about. I was going to say it was 3.5. It was 3.5? Yeah. Right, so not bad. 3.5. We've been wait, we pegged that, what, six months ago? Nah, not too yeah. bad. So good, even better. You're a little bit better than that. You got a nice premium, and you can use that for various things that Jess could tell you all about. You know that you've done numerous times: cost of issuance, interest, debt service, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all fungible. Oh, Five forty-eight. And how much do we have budgeted for interest for this thing? Twenty-four yeah. here. Yeah, assume a number. Yeah. Right now, let me go back up. To go back out to the. I think I went too far. Well, then you're wrong. Maybe not. Though. Yeah, that's the thing that premium. Yeah. So all of that now I can option for it on the very top. Okay. No. Okay. No, but I'll go up. In the middle, kind of auction portal. Get me to that page. I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay. Oh, auction portal. Nice.
Beauty. So this will not be as exciting, so don't anyone get Susan's oh boy. Come on now, really. And oh it's eight million. Yeah, it'll, it'll be kind of exciting. It's just not gonna be as good. I mean, even last so last year, I think like the bonds got nine bids. Just use a little positivity. Uh, we just had the positivity. Now we just oh, I love kind it. of guide right in. We guide enjoy right it. In. It's very oh, all right. frequent. <laughs> <Right here. laughs> well, this is a big day. This is the most exciting day of the year. All right. I agree. I agree. So, all right. So, in this case, bids open in 52 seconds. They go to 1145. Same rules apply. Same everything applies. Except the fact that it's a note, it's eight million, it's a year. You know, these guys, it's not like there's 20 different maturities that they can tweak and, and make, you know, a hundred thousand on. These guys might make two thousand dollars on this deal. So, uh, you know, they're gonna probably plop their best bid in. You know, there might be some adjustments, but I wouldn't think there's gonna be uh, quite as much activity. Last year, we, were, we had five bids at a 238 net interest cost. So obviously we're higher than that because that front end of the curve is way higher than it was a year ago. So most recently, uh, well, the most recent note sale in, in Connecticut was Derby. We are not going to use that as um, <laughs> that is one of ours, but that is a problem child, man. Let me tell you something. So you got Mansfield, Stratford, not really a comp, but kind of. It's on page seven. Um, I don't know. Rates seem to three, be in the 350-ish ballpark. Those those were like a month ago, so we might be a little higher than that, I would think. So that was a month ago. Let's do some. I'll just show you. So if we're at the same rate. What's the benefit? A month ago, actually, rates pretty much about the same. Uh, well, we're gonna be. I'm guessing. Uh, hopefully, we'll be actually like under it. So typically. You know, rates on notes are way lower, so yeah, it's kind of private. Which is why we don't yeah. use them. So if they're comparable, what's the point? Well, you yeah, have the, the scenario of like grants and all these projects that are like yeah that we're waiting on. Yeah, but we don't have a cash flow issue. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, well, we've gone down a lot. It gives you some more flexibility. Yeah, we're doing. It's not like you know eight million. We could. But it's also like a mechanism to like you know layer in those bonds the way you want them layered. So use that note to sort of like. Work those in. I mean, you know, that's the thing. We don't know where we're going to be next year, so yeah. But if there if there has been some where it's like grants come in and it's, all right, so the three sixty six that should be too high, hopefully. So let's see how that comes in. Let's see who's won the deals lately. Bad. So Jerry had seventy two million. Well, they had to buy that. They bought that yeah, island, which is crazy. Well, again, they don't want to probably, you know, bond that right away. Yeah. Do you have any islands you're gonna buy? Yeah. What, no, what that they're, they're, they're house. Housing. We can buy the lighthouse. Buy the lighthouse. We should do that. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I woke me up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I bought all these. Oh, Piper. With a lower bid. Have it make like a travel distance. So I mean, we might be that might be our. Kind of the bogey to refit. We might be higher than the bond now. It looks like that's the case. Oh. Okay. Three nine. Oh. Question. It's, it's pretty big. I didn't go out there. My partner Marie was contacted. Um, Piper and Jeffries have really won the last few deals, so that's probably where we're gonna. You know, unless Jeffries maybe comes in a little lower. Yeah. Why? It's, but it's very peaceful. Three. Oh wow! They they actually yeah, yeah, they she saw it. Yeah. This day and told people. But it's really, oh, one basis point. They got a long way to go at that rate. <laughs> to put in a hundred <laughs> bids. <laughs> but like, let's see here. Oppy hasn't bid. They just put another one in. One eight five. They gotta wake up. Yeah. But it's early still. Yeah, I know. So maybe they're just like, we got fifteen minutes. I'm gonna bid in every every ten seconds. Just put another one. You got some kind of algorithm thing. Just just run maybe. automatically. Yeah, maybe. That in fact they're not going to do anything. How is the town implementing AI? Anything? Anything good? No? Artificial yeah. intelligence? Are you using it, Stratford? Oh yeah? For what? I did my whole internship program on AI. Oh yeah? 
Yeah. So what, like, what, like right, roll it up or like, what did you do? I went on that chat GPT. I yeah, yeah. Uh, create an internship program for a municipality. And it gave That's me all so the funny. documents. It gave me like yeah. interview questions. It, I got like nine pages of stuff. And then I had my assistant tweak it all to the town of Stratford. And it's pretty amazing. <laughs> background tasks, programs for them yeah. to do. Wow. Um, it's awesome. He might use it a little bit more for, uh, you know, some of the modeling and the discounted cash flow. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It should be interesting to see. I mean, everybody's using that. All right, that's cool. That's better. I wasn't, I was more even interested. I've got it. It's just same thing. The meeting, and you put in a second. Just trying to liven the thing up. More business. Just had a dialogue. Jeffries is now ahead of six months. Eleven. They they got a they got about thirty pounds. They are I don't know who that is, but they are uh, they are looking at some other data. <laughs> if they're coming in there and, and thinking that it's like you might set a new bid record on the last bid that will never change position. <laughs> oh, I'm still in the fourth. I can feel it. I can feel it coming. What the hell is going on with this? I don't think they totally understand how to Piper. bid. Just putting in new bids. Oh, that's <laughs> the case. That definitely might be the case. All right, there's Captain again. Ability. Oh, yeah. Ability wants both. Yeah, how come Piper is showing individual? I was just saying, I think so I haven't seen that before. I think maybe they don't, that person doesn't understand how to improve a bit. They're just putting in new bits every time. Huh. It's the same, you could, the last two initials are like supposed to be the person's initials. And I don't recognize from Piper who that is. Yeah, I see, I'm not sure who that is. It's usually it's Joanna or, yeah, Chris de Serbo. Yeah, yeah. Unless Chris changed his last name. Huh. Right forward. He got married, changed the wife. Or whatever. On the stage where it's All right. So that's how you do it, Jeffries. You get you change it one time for five basis points. That's a, that's a meaningful adjustment. You guys have changed it twelve times for the same amount. It's kind of funny. Anything's happening here. Thirteen bits. All the same resources. It's kind of fascinating. Have a lot of time to go. So let's see. Let's take a last year. So last year, Fidelity. It's weird. Last year, they're not moving up in the ranking. So you would think they. And so now, like, you've made 14 adjustments and you went from, you know, they were in fourth for a yeah. while. Now yeah. that they're in, you're in six. Yeah. I watched the, all those. Top of full percentage point off. Next one. 15, 15 bits. Huh. I guess they're not busy. So Fidelity won the last year bid too. For the notes. Second. Um, so what we did was. Well, still, it was there. But they only put in one bid last year. Yeah. So it was the same person though. But they were last, so it didn't matter. Okay, now they figured it out here. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say. <laughs> Seven minutes, seven and a half. It's a lot of action for a like like a smaller note like this early in the process for them to all be screwing around. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, we got just M and T. I assume. We got just confirm. Change the ABA number. Like we're putting another. Also get there, but yeah. Without the, if you have the preceding two zeros on it, you should go visit the whole. On the ABA. No, on the account. No. So what, there's another two zeros on there? No, they get rid of those two. It's just four seven zeros. I think Emmett's a zero two. Two. How's the transition been to Emmett T? Seamless, seamless transition. Dave's been uh, here for you. And Dave's been very uh, available. He's not, available he's not on it. Is he? He's not on it for anybody I've ever talked to, except for maybe you. 
Well, she's, she's getting some. She's getting some NASA last week. You know who's been in here? Yeah. Robert. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Another deal with you. You got you got a couple of great options right there. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Uh, yes, I would. Out of those two, Robert is a very nice guy. I understand. Just a lot. Small doses. Small doses. From a personal standpoint, I understand. But from a business standpoint, oh yeah. The ground. Fair. It's going to be a lot better. Where is Dave still live in town? Yeah. Right there. Where did Robert live? I think he's in Monroe or something. No, where he is. I think he lives. He, I know that's where he's from. Then I think he got deported. Yeah, 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 I think he lives in like Bethel now. Yeah. Bethel. It's still very well. Ooh. I'll want to him very Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Jeffrey's a piper. Oh, yeah. My wife taught her, his daughter at, at, uh, middle school or high school or something. She's still yeah. nice. okay. All right, we're down in the 350s. It's a horse race. That's cool. Between the two of them, Jeffrey's a piper. Now, Piper's really woken up here with the adjustment. Again, we're still five minutes away. So note sales, I mean, probably part of the reason is what, there's like 10 sales in the country today. Of course, there's a big Santa Cruz, 60 million, 70 million in Quincy, Mass. Actually, all the other ones, for the most part, are pretty small. So they have time to screw around at the game that you want to play. So take it. I mean, no bidders traditionally were like, call in, here's the rate, see you later. Boink. Like, it takes two seconds to put a bid in. You're basically selling the whole thing to probably like Vanguard, Dreyfus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unifund, whatever. So, probably pre sold, I think. Yeah, definitely. And well, interestingly enough, there's when, I don't know, I guess maybe when rates were lower, I don't know what you want to say, but there was oftentimes historically where it's the same coupon on every single bid. And when that's the case, they all assume that they're all trying to sell it to the same place. You know, they're selling to, you know, Fidelity has a big, it could be Fidelity. Sure. And they're all talking to that guy, and that guy's just using them all kind of against each other. They basically take a decent amount of money. So, so here we have, you know, at least there's a few different coupons in the mix. So there's definitely, a, it means there's at least a couple different buyers. Um, but in fact, actually, Piper has all the fives. So, and Fidelity, Bank of New York, and Derby is a four and a half. So there's definitely a couple of buyers in there. That Derby note sale is a 6%. Oh, that's so gross. I remember you showed me The only that. times you've ever seen that. That's fair. My colleague does that. And he said 6% on a note like, coupon rate. I haven't seen a 6% like in my career, I don't think. I mean, I've been doing it since 99. I don't think I've ever seen a 6% on any new deals. When was that? Yeah. Like a month ago? It was a 6% coupon, but there was premium. So that's why it went down to like a four or whatever. But again, like bond rates, you know, you got 20 maturities and 5% is like the max you've ever seen. And we've gotten down to where when we were at the lowest low, 21-ish, whatever, we saw like, I saw a 1% coupon on a maturity, like maybe twice or three times. And that's weird to look at too. Oh, see that? Look at that. All right, they let they let they let the party get started a little bit, and they come in. They're in second place. They're pretty close, half a base point away. And we'll see if they're gonna uh, make any improvements. No one's given up. Uh, yeah, I think you went to lunch. They're 15 tries. Yeah, I think I got approved to my boss that I I did a lot of work today. So I'm gonna do like this here the whole time. 27 bids. Freaking unbelievable. 15 to one. 15 by 1, 12 by everybody else. Yeah, the one Yeah. He's been dead last the whole time. None of those things worked. Yeah, so we got seven bit. Well, let's see here, actually. Okay, I got another. So now TD is in the mix. So I got to take out two of them. So we have six bidders because Piper's on there three times. Uh, we had five last year. That's cool. Fidelity won. They're probably not going to win this. Jeffries was second last year. TD made seven improvements last year. And they're they going to have to get on the horse to try to win this. But any improvements now will extend the bid since we're into the final two minutes. Let's see. 
So one, so one thing while we're just sitting around here. So these two bids, and hopefully they won't change in the next 10 seconds while I'm talking about it. But Oppenheimer and Piper, 5% coupons. Obviously, it's the same amount. So the premium, this is the difference. Uh, Four, less than four dollars. I mean, again, it's point zero 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 one, whatever. But we're talking about four extra bucks of premium puts Piper in second place. It's as easy as that. Of course, they don't know that. That's why it's cool when you have the same coupons. On, like, there's some bond bids that we, if I, we wanted to go back and waste a lot of time, where if you find the same exact fives to fours, it's the same premise, like same couponing, just means that that premium is all that does it. Of course, with a 20 year deal, you know, a, a, a couple basis points here and there makes a big difference. But here it's just one year, so it's like that simple. All right, 30 seconds. 28, 27. That's it. Count it down. Still. Yeah. Never know. So no one wanted to be really the only one below three six. Yeah. Oh, so that's Darren. No, that's no Darren. And um, oh, Dan Kylie, that's right. Darren is up and on. But it's been a while since I worked on Jeffries. That's it. We are. Expired. Stop. Jeffrey's at 3.598972. What's that? Premium. Boom, boom, boom. So we'll verify this too. Are we verified? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. I know. I just thought you didn't. Was 4.5. I have 73 to a fire hotel yesterday. It's like me and a firmer sandwich. And I come back and I get an overactivity alert. They charge me $345. Wow. wow, it's inflation. It's me. Inflation. I'm going to fire out something. Excuse me. But so I should check my oh, card from when it came the other day because I, I gave the card and they gave me back. I don't know how much it cost. Oh, right. That's crazy. You had your call this morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, yes, we were verified. Right, so we're verified. All right, so we're verified at the Jeffries bit bid of a 3.598972 NIC. The recommendation would be obviously to take that as it conforms with the notice of sale and results into the lowest cost to the town. So, yes. Jeffries. So we'll make a motion to accept um, the offer of 3.598 from Jeffries. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Excellent job, everybody. So, uh, so yeah, no, this all came together nice. Excellent job for you guys. I'm mean, just sitting here watching it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, all the real work is what kind of went into we, the success. We celebrate. Yeah. The real work is the, the, the real work is how great that is, and that's what led to this great result. This is this is where the effort goes. Yeah, that's where the effort and the rating. Don't forget the rating. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole thing. But. Uh, Good people. I think the ratings went about as smoothly as they could have been yeah. possibly done. And the first guy, we were just shooting the shit with him. Yeah. yeah no. So that was up nice, Jared. good results. Congratulations. Excellent. And do we need to like unrecord? Yeah, do we have to adjourn the meeting? Oh, yeah. Should we adjourn the meeting? Yes. Um, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, Aye. Nancy. All right. Thanks.